Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Peter Herman Adventures. Today I'm going to try something a little bit different for you guys. I'm going to do a gear review and I will be reviewing three different center pin rod and wheel combos and um, they're the three that I own. Well, one of them my daughter owns. And, uh, we'll put them head to head and we'll make a few casts with each one and I'll kind of review them as I go. It's um, end of November on the Vetter River, which is a pretty quiet time here. It's kind of that in-between season. The salmon have tapered off to next to nothing and the steelhead have yet to arrive in any significant numbers. So it's a very quiet time on the river, not too much going on. I've been a little obsessed lately with chasing salmon, so this quiet time gives me a chance to film a couple of videos for you guys. And the reels I will be reviewing today are the Okuma Raw 2, which is paired with an Okuma rod. reviewing the Lure Jensen Legacy Reel which is paired with a uh, Lure Jensen Legacy Series Drift Rod and I will be reviewing the Amazon Reel. This is uh, doesn't really have a brand name on it. It's sold under a couple of different names on Amazon and um, that's the reel I learned how to center pin on last year so We'll review that one. It's paired with one of my favorite rods, the Shimano Convergence series. So we'll give all of those uh, a few casts and I'll talk about them as we go. Okay, so the first reel we're going to have a look at is the Amazon reel. It uh, doesn't really have a brand name on it, so that's what I call it, the Amazon reel. It's sold by a couple of different vendors and I think the price, if the price kind of varies between $75 and $100 depending on whether it's on sale or not. And I got this reel about a year ago. And that's the pin reel that I learned how to fish on. I'm going to adjust my depth here a little bit. Let's see along the bottom. So, let's say with taxes and some line, you're looking at about $100 for this reel. It isn't dirt cheap, but it definitely doesn't qualify as an expensive reel either. Um, there were a couple of small issues with this reel, pretty much right out of the box. So there is a space right here in between the housing and the spool itself that's big enough for the main line to sneak into. So every once in a while I would end up with the line going in behind the spool and then I'd have to take the spool off and um, get that line out of there and that was pretty annoying so I fixed that by wrapping a little bit of aluminum tape around the spool and that fixed it now the Now the line can't sneak back in there and everything's good. The other issue with this reel is that the screws didn't stay put. So there are a couple of screws holding it together to the foot and a couple of screws here. And uh, some of those screws loosened off. And some of them got lost. And I had to actually pay a little bit of money at Mike's Reel Repairs to get the reel fixed. So that's, um, if you end up getting this reel, I'm not bashing it, it's, it's not a bad reel. I've landed a lot of nice fish on this, uh, several steelhead, a bunch of different salmon species. It, you know, it's a definitely a fishable reel, but if you get it, the first thing I would do is take those screws out, put in a little bit of Loctite and screw them back in so they don't loosen off. The other thing that's kind of iffy about this reel is the click, the, the the clicker so the, the clicker is there so that when you're tying up or carrying the rod you can click it over so that it doesn't just free spool and make a mess this clicker it's not a very good engagement on the mechanism so sometimes when i'm fishing 
it just kind of clicks on on its own and it gets kind of annoying when you're in the middle of fishing and you have to keep fiddling with the reel so those things aside it's a decent reel it looks good which you know let's be honest here with a center pin reel it has to look good in pictures otherwise what's the point of center pin The rod that I'm fishing it with is uh, Shimano Convergence. And I think they've discontinued the Convergence line now and it's just become the Claris line. Similar quality and everything. These are by far my favorite salmon reels, uh, salmon rods. Um, I, uh, I have only good things to say about Shimano rods. They're inexpensive. I think this rod is retails for I don't know, somewhere in their 120 to 150 dollar range, and they're nearly indestructible. They're they're sensitive enough that the tip, yeah, you can use it for even trout fishing, and uh, you can feel the little nibbles. But um, at the same time, the tip is hard enough that when you do a small short hook set, the line straightens out right away, and and you get a nice hook up. So. It's, uh, if I had to buy only one rod, the Shimano Convergence would definitely be it. I never broke one. I own several. I own some spinning versions and um, the um, center pin version. And definitely they can take a beating. I, you know, I put them down on the rocks, smack branches when a salmon pops off and I've never broken one. I've never had a fish break one. Uh, I did lose one because I tripped and I fell on it and the tip broke. But other than that, they're a really tough rod and a, and a good value for the money. Okay, let's go on to another reel. Might as well show you guys how I hook up my row bags so the row bags i put the hook just the tip just through the mesh at the top and that's how it sits on there that way when the fish comes up to grab it there's lots of hooks sticking out and as they come up to grab it the lip gets caught right away All right. so here is the second reel that i'm reviewing for you guys this is my daughter's reel she won it last year at the sage coward coho derby and it's a beautiful reel of all the ones we have this is probably the most expensive one it retails for about 250 to 280 dollars somewhere in that range and it's a it's a beautiful reel it's well made it has a beveled front edge here and that bevel really makes a, a really good comfortable contact with the fingers so when you're when you're fighting a fish this design I think is, is really nice and I like the color scheme especially when you put some orange backing on there um, the back of it looks a little different it's a pretty cool look oh, and, and it's paired with an Akuma rod from Fred's I really like this reel. I think of all the ones we have, it's it's kind of my favorite. I'm not 100% sold on the Akuma rod. It's got a really soft tip to it. So when you set the hook, I'll show you a hook set, it, it, it really kind of bends over more than it should. There's a little bit of delay there. And I'll show you guys, when, when this rod bends, the tip bends a lot, the rest of the rod not so much until you apply really a lot of pressure. So to me, the, the tip is too soft for the rest of the rod, but 
it casts really well. So. Well, one more cast for good luck. And, oh, I made a little bit of a boo-boo there. I wasn't concentrating. I've only been center pinning for a year and still get the occasional mess. It takes full-time concentration to run a center pin. So, the last reel that I'm going to review for you guys is the Lure Jensen Legacy. I didn't buy this reel either. I won it at the Sage Coward Derby this year. And um, I'm really enjoying fishing it. It's a well-made reel. It's got kind of a classic look to it. So from this side, it looks a lot like an Islander. And um, from the back side, it's just a plain black, nothing too flashy. You know, Legacy, I think the look they're going after is, is a classic old style look. And I think they've achieved that really well. I just saw a fish splash here, so I'm gonna try and catch it. Pretty close to shore. Seems like maybe I've been casting a little bit too far. And depth wise, yeah, a little bit too deep. So you hear the clicker there. The clicker on this reel, uh, it's, it's almost too hard to engage. It's pretty solid click between the clicker and knot, so there is no chance of engaging it accidentally. And of all the reels that I'm reviewing today, I think this one casts the smoothest. It, the bearings in it are super nice. And it, I have no difficulty making this reel cast right across the river. And this reel, what does it retail for? I think something like $220. So it's also kind of on the affordable range of center pin reels. Make up your mind, Peter. <laughs> are we fishing or are we making a video? Well, I'm trying to do both at the same time. And uh, hopefully you guys aren't getting too bored with me making casts rather than talking the whole time. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying this reel. The only thing that I don't like about it is the rim where your fingers make contact. It's, it's rounded over and it's really smooth. Like the, the anodized finished on here is slippery. So when it's raining out and my hands are a bit cold, It can be a little bit hard to control the fish. So you really have to kind of like really squeeze it hard to put enough break on the fish to reel it in. So I'm sure as this reel ages a bit and as I, you know, gets a few little dings and dents in it and as I, it, it, it will get rougher and it will get easier to fish. What I'm really impressed with from Lure Jensen in this Legacy series is the fishing rod. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I do. It's a really slender rod. It's 11 feet long. And you know, it, it, it kind of, it looks flimsy when you look at it, but I've had, so I'll show you the, the rod here. Legacy series, medium, moderate, eight to 17 pound line and i've really been enjoying it like i if if i wasn't already such a fan of the shimano convergence i would say this is a 
my favorite rod, but I, I'm still sticking with the Shimano. I really like him. But Legacy really did a great job on, well, not Legacy, Lure Jensen really did a great job on this rod. It's, um, it's slender, but it's powerful. I've had some big chum on with this rod and I'll show you how it bends over. So when you've got a fish on, you get a really nice, beautiful arc to it. It's sensitive, but it's, it's stiff enough to fight even a pretty big fish. I don't think I'd have any trouble getting a big spring in on this rod. Uh, but it's the details where Lure Jensen really went all out. So none of the other rods have cork right here. So when you're fishing a center pin, your, the, your, your hand really is grabbing the rod right there. All the other rods, this is just bare plastic. Having that little bit of cork on there actually makes the rod much more comfortable. They have a really nice hook loop right here. It's uh, really much better quality than what I've seen on rods in a similar price, price range. And the guides on this are really nice double footed guides uh, for the bottom section and then they switch to single, single foot guides on top. So these two bottom ones are really sturdy and I really like that. Um, really have um, nothing bad to say about this rod. I read some reviews online about guys saying they break, but I think that might have been just the first production run that had some issues. It's uh, definitely a great value for the money. This rod retails for $120 to $140, somewhere in there. And it really fishes like a much more expensive rod. So congratulations to Lower Jensen on, on designing something that's beautiful and classic and functional. I really like this setup. Well, I knew there was a fish in here, but I don't know. That one might have been foul hooked. Certainly jumped out of the water like it was foul hooked. Well, that was a doe chum. And the way my float went down, I thought for sure that was a solid bite, but I think it was hooked around the front fin the pectoral fin. Sometimes it's kind of a, a point where the hook can get wrapped up. As long as we're doing gear reviews, I'm also going to show you guys my favorite float and the way that I set it up for fishing salmon and steelhead. So this is it. It's a little bit beat up. But uh, this, if I only had to buy one float for the rest of my life, this would be it right here. Um, this is a 30 gram and um, I prefer 20. The 20 is a little bit quieter to cast. And since coho spoke very easily just from the splash of your float, I do prefer a smaller float. But other than that, this clear drift in the bright yellow color, they call it chartreuse and it's the big water series i really enjoy fishing this float i find that i can see these yellow floats in the dusk much better than i can the red floats so during the day you can definitely see a red or bright orange float way better but in the dusk you know morning and evening these yellow floats really stand out um, the way i fish it is i'll put two bobber stoppers at the top then the float and then another bobber stopper underneath and this bottom bobber stopper keeps the float from running away if you ever snag up on your weights 
and uh, break off at the weights here, your float at least still stays on the line. So uh, underneath the float, I have three, these are three seven gram egg weights, then a little bit of a bead. This can also be a little rubber bumper of some sort. It just keeps the lead from damaging your knot. Um, small swivel, about two feet of leader, and then uh, number one owner's hook. I use the cutting point ones. I really like those. There's no reason really to go bigger than number one. When I'm fishing wool, I'll go even to a smaller, like a number two hook. So yeah, this setup works equally well for coho and steelhead. I'm, this is a 12 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon leader. Same thing, 12 pound is plenty for catching all of these fish. The 12 pound fluorocarbon performs just as well as any other kind of 15 pound material. In fact, occasionally when I'm fishing 12 pound, my main line, if I'm snagged up on something, my main line will break before the leader does. So that says something about the 12 pound rating. It, it really, I think, is underrated for the strength of it. Darn, I didn't even bring a landing net today. Well, I haven't got him into shore yet. But uh, usually I, I really like bringing a landing net so I don't have to handle the fish if they're going to be released. And this fish definitely looks like it's going to be released. The belly is all black. And uh, I keep chum if they have a white belly. I really enjoy eating chum. But this one here, Got a black belly. Not ready to go. Chum have sharp teeth, so when they're on for a long time like this, they really often they go through the leader. The teeth will eventually saw through the leader.
it's a doe chum. Yeah. Doe chum, yep. Do you have a net? No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm going to keep this one, so I think I'll just drag her up on the beach down there. Oh, it's a chum, eh? Yep, nice chroma. Well, there you have it. I wasn't really expecting to bring home a fish today, but so uh, this is a nice one. I uh, certainly don't waste fish like this. They, uh, every part of it will be used and uh, I'll probably have enough row out of this one for my entire steelhead season. So yeah, what can I say? I'm pretty excited. I really wasn't coming here to catch fish. I was coming here to do a video for you guys. Uh, yeah, I had to take the fish downstream a little bit to land it in a in a nicer spot.